Good afternoon, everyone. I um, hope you're all enjoying the conference uh, and many thanks for sticking with us in the heat. Uh, my name is Richard Nevinson and I head up the ICO's recently established Digital Economy Department, which, among other things, is responsible for coordinating the ICO's work with our fellow UK digital regulators. Uh, it's great to see so much interest in the collaborative work we're undertaking to help shape the UK's digital regulatory landscape. Um, of course, much of the conference agenda focuses on the, the nuts and bolts of information rights compliance, but it's clear that many organisations processing personal data need to be mindful of the bigger regulatory picture. And with, it, with that bigger picture in mind, the aim of this session is to introduce you to the work of the Digital Regulation Cooperation Forum, or DRCF. Uh, this initiative is truly world leading. Uh, it brings together the UK regulators for competition, financial services, privacy and online safety and communications to ensure cohesiveness in our regulation of digital platforms and create greater certainty for the public and industry. And I'm joined today by senior colleagues from across the DRCF membership. So on the panel today, we have Kat Batchelor, the Director of, uh, for the Digital Markets Unit at the Competition and Markets Authority, Robin Finer, Director of Competition at the Financial Conduct Authority, Chia Seeler, Principal for Public Policy at Ofcom, and Stephen Almond, the Director of Technology and Innovation here at the ICO. But before I bring in the panel to discuss the work of the DRCF, uh, I thought it'd be useful to give you a very quick overview of the forum, uh, as we're conscious that some delegates might not be over familiar with its, uh, with its history. So the forum was established uh, in July 2020 by the CMA, ICO and Ofcom uh, in recognition of the ever closer interactions between our remits, particularly in light of the developing pro competition and online online safety regimes in the UK. Uh, the FCA then joined us in April 2021 and that recognised the rapid expansion of digital platforms into financial services. So the forum exists on a voluntary rather than a statutory basis, but this provides us with a high degree of flexibility in shaping work streams that will deliver tangible outputs and benefits for the public and industry. First formal DRCF work plan covered the 2021-22 financial year, and I'll be speaking to the panel a little bit later about some of the forum's early achievements. Uh, but it's the 22-23 work plan where we think that the, the, the forum will really start to demonstrate its value. If you haven't seen the plan, uh, you can access it through the DRCF page on gov.uk. Uh, but in summary, it focuses on three key themes. So the first of these is coherence, uh, with a particular focus on protecting children online, promoting competition and privacy in online advertising, and broader work to ensure coherence across the regimes. Secondly, collaboration, uh, with a focus on improvements in algorithmic transparency and enabling innovation in regulated industries. And third, capability with a focus on improving our knowledge sharing, building synergies in our approaches to horizon scanning and recruiting and retaining specialist talent. So that's a very quick overview of the DRCF's history and its current plans. Uh, there'll potentially be an opportunity for us to address questions from the audience at the end, end of the session, depending on how much time we have left. So uh, please start submitting them as we're speaking. Uh, but without further ado, uh, I'd like to bring in the panel um, and put the first question to, to Kat at the CMA. Um, so Kat, firstly, could you describe some of the benefits uh, of regulators working together under the DRCF banner? Yes, of course. Thanks, Richard. And thanks for the invitation to participate today. Um, you touched a bit on what DRCF is, and I thought it was just worth saying a little bit more on, on the four members, because I think it provides the basis for understanding why it's important that we work together. Uh, you said it comprised the four of us, so the CMA, the competition regulator in the UK, but taking on responsibility for the new digital markets unit, which will be responsible for the new pro competition regime, which will regulate, comp uh, in, promote competition uh, in relation to the most powerful digital platforms. Ofcom, the com sectoral communications regulator in the UK, but is taking on responsibility for the new online safety regime, which will look at the content uh, that platforms host. Obviously, I know you're all very familiar with the ICO and its data protection role, uh, and Richard mentioned the FCA and its increasing role uh, in relation to uh, big, big tech and digital uh, moving into financial services. So why is it important that we work together? Well, as you can see, there is a huge amount of potential overlap in the remits of those four regulators. Um, and it's really important that we work together to collaborate and coordinate our work really to three aims. And you touched on those. They're encapsulated by the work plan. The first is collaboration. And there's a recognition that there are many issues in digital markets that affect all of us and that we are all worried about. So algorithms is a really good example of that. 
we are all individually looking at the role of algorithms and the role that they play and what that means for our own individual remits. So there's a recognition that rather than do that individually, we will be much better served by leveraging our combined skills and experience and building up a sort of foundational level of knowledge of the issues in a, in a collaborative manner. So that's the first. The second is coherence. Um, and as I say, we, we have these slightly different remits, whether it be content, competition, data protection, uh, but they all interact in um, various different ways. And sometimes those can be mutually reinforcing and it's really important that we understand where that where that's the case. But also there can be examples where they come into tension with one another. Um, and again, it's really important that we can provide clarity to consumers, to businesses on how those regimes join up and therefore how they should be, how firms should be thinking about um, compliance in that broadest sense. And then lastly, capabilities. Um, one of the key benefits, as I say, is this knowledge sharing, working together to build capability in a more efficient manner. So sharing knowledge, sharing understanding, thinking about things like recruitment, building of our teams, building of expertise um, so that we can be the most efficient version of ourselves. So the real benefit that DRCF brings is that by working together, we as individual regulators are more efficient, but also more effective in the sense that we have that holistic view of the problems that we are trying to solve across digital markets. Great, thank you, Kat. Um, and how would you describe the change in approach to collaboration um, since the DRCF was, was established? So I think the first thing that's important to say is we have always worked together. So as four regulators, you know, DRCF wasn't the beginning of our working together. We've been doing that on a long standing basis. But what it provides the mechanism for is to join up in a more systematic and more ambitious way. Um, so I guess to take examples, um, what we are trying to do across the regulators is in a systematic way, have people within our organisations do what we call think DRCF. So at the minute they look at a particular issue, they are thinking, well, is there something in common with my fellow regulators? Is someone else going to be looking at that? Is someone else going to have some information that's relevant to me here? Is something that I do here going to have an impact on one of my fellow regulators? And therefore doing that join up across everything that we do um, in a systematic way. And part of what we've done with DRCF is create the infrastructure to support that level of ambition. So we have a new CEO, there is a new core team that are supporting this joining up across the regulators. Um, and there are also a series of um, multi-regulator project teams. So people from our four organisations who are working together on really ambitious projects in areas like algorithms, enabling innovation, how we build skills and capability. So it's raised the level of ambition, but it's also delivered the mechanism by which we can cooperate in a more systematic way. I guess the last thing to just mention is, you know, we do refer to ourselves as a startup, uh, and I think that's true in the sense that, you know, you mentioned flexibility as a key benefit of the model we have at the moment. And we're absolutely open to the fact that, you know, we will adapt, we will evolve our approach and we'll seek feedback on that. So, you know, to anybody uh, watching, you know, very much invite feedback on our work, on our approach. And um, as I say, it's an evolving picture. Thank you, Kat. Um, next, I'm going to bring in Chia. Um, so Chia, people in the audience will, will, will be starting to think about what 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 the DRCF actually means for them. Um, so, could you tell us briefly about how the how the DRCF actually delivers for consumers and for businesses? Sure. I mean, I think it, it's reasonable to unpack a bit what things like coherence actually mean for the people using digital services, and just to pause a bit and think a little bit about the consumer's perspective. Um, some recent research from Ofcom. You know, most people think 70 percent, well, around 70 percent think the benefits of being online outweigh the risks. Now, that's really great. But 30 percent um, the other way around is actually a really sizable minority of people that don't think that way. And that increases for some particular groups like uh, young people, women, um, as well as minority ethnic groups. And in terms of what they're concerned around and the potential harms, I mean, it splits between 
content harms, what we call contact harms about how people interact, but also commercial harms, fraud and scams, um, and risks associated with uh, commercialised collection of data. And it absolutely makes sense. You know, we, we as regulators have some tools today to help with that. Um, we're, we're likely to have more soon. But it really makes sense that as we go about fixing, you know, some of those issues, that we're not inadvertently um, exacerbating others or, you know, at worst creating other harms um, or even missing opportunities where uh, we could have done things better um, or we could have done things in a more holistic way. And really at its heart, uh, that's what um, this join up is about. Um, in terms of businesses, again, I mean, Kat, Kat mentioned the way that we are thinking through what it will actually mean for businesses who will need to comply with a range of different regimes at the same time uh, for the same service. And, and you know, we're really cognizant of that and, and thinking about what that looks like. But, you know, even things like um, using a, a shared and common language when we're talking about the same thing, you know, that's a really, it, it's such a fundamental point to um, how businesses experience uh, the regulatory landscape. Um, so there really are a, a, a sort of a range of, of benefits there. Thanks, Chia. Um, and staying on the topic of um, what, what the DRCF delivers for, for businesses, of course, we'll have a lot of people in, in the audience who are data practitioner, protection practitioners rep representing um, private business. How should those businesses think about, about the DRCF? You know, how should they see its role? How should they potentially seek to, to interact with it? So it's sort of not labouring the point that, you know, it is it is a positive step um, for businesses. I think the point that was made earlier about it being a voluntary uh, forum, um, it is a, it is a formal form of cooperation between us as regulators, but it is not in itself a, a, a sort of a new um, body in the regulatory landscape. Um, and I think it's important for businesses to recognise that it doesn't change the fundamental nature of, of our roles and it doesn't change the fundamental um, sort of relationship that, that we have with our sectors and, and stakeholders as well. Having said that, uh, you know, the DRCF and working together through the DRCF gives us some really great opportunities um, for making things uh, easier and, 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 and more efficient ultimately for businesses. A really good example of this uh, was a round table that we ran back in April in Manchester, and this brought together uh, a bunch of startups and, and SMEs and, and academics to think about fintech and cybersecurity. And, and this sort of opportunity for us to hear collectively uh, from, a, from innovators in the space, but also for, for smaller uh, uh, businesses and firms to, in, in sort of one session, um, get some time with with each of us and, and hear directly from all four regulators is just such a great opportunity and, and that's the kind of uh, thing we're really keen to explore more. Great, thanks Chia. Um, so I'm going to bring in Stephen next. Um, Stephen, we've, we've, we've touched on on the DRCF's priorities for, 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 for this year, um, but I think the audience will be keen to understand how, how we're actually going to measure success on those priorities. Thanks. Look, I think there are three key tests um, for DRCF in terms of the difference it makes. I mean, one is um, for uh, you know, in terms of the delivery of our core regulatory remits um, in terms of uh, safeguarding people and, and uh, in terms of protecting consumers in terms of furthering competition. Is it actually making us do that more effectively? Are we harvesting, um, you know, the kind of the shared learnings, the, the the opportunities that come from working together to deliver greater impact? I think the second test for us is around the impact that we have on the organisations that we regulate. And um, so, are we actually making it easier for business to do business with us? Are we making it um, easier? Um, for them to to deliver um, you know their own regulatory expectations in a coordinated way across our regulatory regimes because we know that so many organizations are working with more than one of us is it easy for them to find out the right thing to do to do the right thing um, and then I think the third test 
um, for me is actually one for us as regulators. Uh, you know, are we are we profiting from the um, the learning that uh, we are getting from each other, the new connections that we're making to deliver our work sort of more effectively? And so, you know, just to give you an example of some of our work over the last year, and um, uh, I touch on our work on uh, on algorithmic processing, and you know, particularly sort of the the, the work that we've been doing thinking about um, AI. Here we have really been uh, thinking about well, actually, look, how do we develop a shared view of what are the the sort of the the harms and the the risks that we're trying to tackle and the benefits of algorithmic processing so that we're able to deliver on our remits more effectively. How do we join up um, our approaches to uh, both regulation, but also sort of algorithmic assurance in this space so that actually we've got a, a, a more harmonized approach that is um, easier for organizations to comply with and more effective. And how are we sharing that learning across for regulators? And it's been a really great experience of discovery to start to get that work up and running. And there's even more ambitious steps planned ahead um, for what we'll do together on, on algorithms over the next year. Great, Thank, thanks Stephen. Um, so you've touched on, on, on the work we've done around algorithms there, but could you give us um, a bit of an overview of, of, of some of the other outputs that the DRCF successfully de delivered during its first year? Thanks. Well, look, I mean, the short answer is lots um, uh, of, of things. I'll, I'll give you um, sort of in addition to the work on algorithm, algorithms and um, kind of my my remaining top five, uh, if, I, if I will. So um, to, to start out, um, uh, just now, 14 months ago, um, the ICO and the CMA came together to publish um, our, our first joint statement, probably the, um, the first of its kind in the world, setting out how we would work together um, to regulate digital markets, taking into account um, the uh, the competition and the data protection impacts. And you heard Kat allude earlier to the fact that there are synergies between these re regimes, but there are also um, tensions and we need to work through how those regimes interact in order to provide clarity for business on our remit and how we're going to um, both uh, sort of take action on, on different matters. That was a, um, a great precursor to um, the second uh, item that, um, that I was going to come to, um, which is the collaboration between the CMA and the ICO um, uh, applying that, that position statement um, uh, in the course of the CMA's uh, investigation into Google's privacy sandbox or its, its plans to phase out third party cookies and um, really creating a, a very novel way of working for us to look at actually how can the CMA and the ICO work hand in hand um, to assess the implications um, of that phase out of third party cookies for both for both competition uh, and uh, uh, for data protection and to really be furthering both of those aims. Um, and that has um, that work continues, but it was a really successful milestone um, just earlier this year with the CMA uh, announcing that it had uh, agreed legally binding commitments with Google on how this would be taken in forward um, uh, that it touched on both competition and privacy and making sure that both of those objectives were captured. Um, so it's been a, a, a particularly successful collaboration. I'm mean, sticking with a, um, uh, the CMA, but a different uh, collaboration between the CMA and Ofcom. Um, uh, there was a, a really chunky piece of work last year to advise government on how a code uh, might govern the relationships between uh, platforms and content providers such as as news publishers for example to ensure that they are as fair um, and as reasonable as possible um, and then sticking with with Ofcom um, then uh, Ofcom uh, last uh, year introduced um, its uh, video sharing platform regime um, at this, uh, to a similar time scale as the ICO introduced um, uh, or rather the ICO's uh, age appropriate design code came into force. Um, both of those regimes um, set a, uh, a very clear sort of set of requirements um, around protection of children um, and it would have been really easy for us to just pursue those independently and not take account of all of the interlinkages between those, those regimes, but actually we worked handing 
in hand um, on the introduction of those changes to make sure that the regulatory requirements that we were introducing were, were aligned and joined up across the two regulators and that we were really supporting um, organisations to do the right thing um, in that area. Um, uh, and then uh, last um, but not least, so I've touched on the, the algorithmic processing work that brought all four of us together, but there's another um, uh, area of work that has, has brought all four of us together, which is our work on um, horizon scanning, um, where um, the FCA together with CMA, um, Ofcom and ourselves um, uh, launched um, a programme and a call of call for views um, from organisations about actually where do they want to see us join up on the governance of future technologies. And I would really encourage everybody in the audience who's thinking, oh, well, I've got areas that I'd like to see these regulators join up. I've got areas where actually it would be really helpful if there was a, you know, a aligned language and aligned approach across the regulators to continue to feed in through that and through our other portals and to make sure that we're delivering on what you want to see. So very busy first year, um, even bigger plans for year two. We've set out our work plan and you can, um, as Richard said, um, look at it up on, on gov.uk. If you if you just search for DRCF, you'll find it there. Um, but yes, really encourage people to engage with us on next steps. Great, thanks Stephen. I think that gives a sense of, of just how much has been achieved in a, a relatively short space of time. Um, so last but not least, I'm gonna bring in, in, in Robin. Um, Robin, I think from, from an FCA perspective, as the newest member of the forum, um, particularly interested in getting your thoughts on on how effectively you see the see the DRCF working to date, um, and your views on on some of the lessons we've we, we've learned during the early days of of, our, of working under this banner. Thanks, Richard. Um, yeah, so I think broadly we're we're really really pleased with the way the DRCF has been working, and um, I think we're on a journey. Uh, but we've we've made huge strides on that journey. Um, as Kat said, uh, you know, we're not all new to each other. We we ha we have worked together um, before, uh, but quite often it was in pairs rather than as a as a collective four. Um, and and we're definitely working more closely than ever before to bring clear, consistent, coordinated regulation to the UK's digital services and economy. And um, I think key to that has been the work undertaken by the DRCF and the, the core team within the DRCF and the, the establishment of that core team. So uh, in, the, in the last year, as Kat mentioned, we've appointed a chief executive and, and Jill has, has then sort of recruited and grown a core team that I think is now finally at full capacity as of about a week or two ago. Um, and, and that team uh, has enabled us to formalise governance arrangements and make sure that our projects are um, a, a, a sort of coming together in as efficient a way as possible and, and that we're really able to successfully deliver uh, the DRCF's goals. And I think um, the, the, the string of, uh, I think it was the top five uh, that uh, Stephen just uh, alluded to is testament to the fact that we are up and running there. But we're, we're working on the governance, we're working on uh, the way in which we're doing things to improve. And that brings me to the sort of lessons learned, if you like. Um, uh, I think we have learned a lot. And, and I think key to that is, um, is the need for a sound governance processes when we're working across four separate regulators. We each have our own way of doing things. And I think there are inevitably compromises that you have to make if you're going to get to a efficiently and effectively to a, to a commonly agreed uh, outcome. And, uh, and, and key to that is having sound governance processes, which we have developed over the course of the year. I think there's also something about the importance of taking a robust approach to the resourcing of the projects. Um, I think there's potentially a risk when you're doing things in a group of four to sort of think, well, OK, the others are, are allocating lots of resource to that, so I'll, I'll ease back and uh, 
focus on my, my other priorities because we all have a lot of priorities within our organisations. Um, but I think working together and and recognising that we shouldn't be free riding on the contributions of others, but that we should be building on our respective areas of expertise. So in, in one area, the FCA may be expert in a, a subject, and so we would want to offer that expertise in and, and, and help uh, bring bring others along. And in other areas, it will be the, the opposite and we'll be wanting to learn from others. And I think building the uh, the, the mechanisms within which uh, we can make that happen is uh, is really important. And it's something that I think is going well, but, uh, but as I say, we're, we're on a journey. Uh, you're on mute, Richard. Well spotted. Someone, someone had to do it. Um, thanks, Roy. Um, so, just again, returning to you know what what this all means for for for, for businesses. Um, would you be able to briefly set out what you see as the short, medium, and long term benefits um, that that our joint work is going to provide? Yeah, I I think I struggled a bit thinking short, medium, and long. I, I sort of shorter term and longer term. I, I I've, I've split them into. And uh, I think um, I was actually going to cite the example that that Chia gave earlier about uh, the um, the round table in Manchester, which which I attended as well. I mean, I thought that was a really good example of uh, of how businesses might feel some of the shorter term, more immediate benefits of of having a forum with which within which to engage with us collectively as a group of four regulators. And so not only to not have to put your message across four times separately, but also to, um, to, to be able to see that we are receiving that message collectively and that um, we, we can engage with stakeholders where they have views that are of uh, views and experiences that are of digital regulation that, that uh, enable us to collectively understand how we might work better together and individually uh, in the light of those experiences. So I think those opportunities to engage with us um, collectively are, are a huge short term benefit and, and that those benefits should persist in the, in the longer term as well. I think the sort of longer term benefits come come around when we we think about the uh, the regimes working together as coherently as possible uh, and as those regimes evolve um will you know the, the 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 clarity and consistency will be of benefit to everybody and and certainly to businesses and so each year we're going to be prioritizing developing joined up approaches on the issues where we think uh, we have pressing concerns and we have the greatest potential impact for people and businesses in working together. And an example of that is this year set out in the work plan that Stephen alluded to, that we're going to publish research into how each how we as member regulators can make it easier for innovators to introduce new ideas, products and business models across our respective remits. Um, and so we're going to to use this work to explore options for us to improve that journey across our regulatory boundaries. And so uh, obviously the innovative businesses will be big beneficiaries of, of that work, hopefully. Thank you, Robin. Um, so we've got a good selection of, of questions from the uh, from the audience. Uh, and first, I'm going to come back to to Kat. So we have a question in Kat uh, around the headcount in, in in the DRCF. So I think that probably includes both both the core team itself, but perhaps also the number of staff from from each regulator uh, feeding into to the various work streams. Oh, you're muted, Kat. <laughs> that makes two of us. Um, I think that the key thing to say is that the, one of the you know the fundamental principles of DRCF is is efficiency. You know this is about not doing things four times but doing it once in a joined up way. So the sort of the the principle across all of it is that it should be essentially um, 
not necessarily saving us headcount, but at least using the headcount we have in a more effective way than necessarily um, adding some huge new burden. So there is a small core team um, headed up by Jill Whitehead, who's the CEO of 12 people who really exist to facilitate that collaboration. But then the vast majority of people who work uh, in some capacity in DRCF are people who have a day job in the in the regulator. Um, and as part of that day job, they think DRCF at the same time. So I guess to give a concrete example, you know, we all have a horizon scanning team um, who look at what's, uh, you know, what's in our pipeline, what's emerging, what should we be thinking about? You know, they do that for their own organisation. But increasingly, we're doing that holistically. We're doing that together. We're comparing notes. We're saying, oh, well, we're all interested in this. So why don't we build some knowledge here together? Um, so I, I can't put a number on the, you know, the broad spectrum because it could be the combined total of all four regulators if it's working properly. Because as I say, we want everybody to be thinking DRCF to some extent. Um, but there's, there's, as I say, small core team underpinning that. Great. Thank you, Kat. Um, so, Chia, um, perhaps if, if if you're able to the next, take the next one, which is around learnings um, for, 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 from the DRCF. So I have a question here. Uh, are there plans to share learnings from within the DRCF to a wider professional audience? So I'm assuming that's professional audience, but perhaps beyond those those platforms that, that we're immediately focusing on. Sure. Um, I mean, just to say that the, the sort of uh, there's a lot of importance to, to sharing learnings. I mean, that's important in terms of the transparency of our work, um, but particularly around things like horizon scanning and knowledge, you know, we, we need to uh, know where there are gaps. We need to have that open for challenge as well. Um, we're, we're making good steps in, in getting that stuff out there. I mean, one, one thing launched earlier this year was a digital research portal. Um, this brings together in a in a searchable way the research that we've already done across um, uh, us as organizations and in fact uh, we we work through the DLCF also liaising across the, a wider set of regulators with with interests in digital services so it brings in some of their research as well into one place so you can start to see what do we already know um, where where might there be gaps because as Kat was saying, a lot of this is about leveraging what we have really effectively and then seeing where it makes sense um, if there's something that additionally needs to be done. So that's out there um, and absolutely encourage people to engage with that spot gaps. Let us know um, that's what it's all about. The other uh, area where we really want to bring out some learnings is again around horizon scanning. We've been holding a symposium. We held one earlier this year and there'll be another one coming up. Um, and uh, we published a blog after the last one, just setting out you know, what were the things that we learned on the day. And again, you know, this is about um, providing a prompt, if you like, for uh, what what we might be missing. I think more generally, I mean, Stephen has already gone through lots of lots of outputs, um, but we're very much aware that uh, you know, getting getting those um, findings uh, um, out into the out into the public um, is really where uh, the benefits start to land. Thanks, Chia. OK, so the, the next question is around one of our um, specific work streams that uh, Stephen touched on. So, Stephen, I'll, 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 I'll throw this one to you. Um, but could you provide us with an update uh, on the joint work the ICO and the CMA are doing on the Google Privacy Sandbox? Yeah, certainly. Um, so I mean, the, the headline is that um, uh, earlier in the, the spring, um, Google uh, agreed uh, legally binding commitments with the CMA um, on uh, how it was going to take forward um, its work in this area. And you know, this is, I think, a great example um, of um, us as regulators um, not kind of you know, waiting for harm to happen and, and and kind of then trying to to turn things around after the fact, but actually, you know, really the, um, the CMA leaning in um, to the development of the of um, this technology to replace third party cookies um, uh, before its introduction um, and actually agreeing um, a really sort of clear set of uh, of principles for actually those tests that it's going to meet. So I know lots of people 
um, who are uh, engaged in the online advertising space are, are watching these developments, um, but those those commitments um, provide uh, sort of a really clear framework for actually testing uh, you know, the the, uh, um, the the development of the, the technology against those principles. And from the ICO's perspective, um, last autumn we set out um, our own views through a, an opinion um, on uh, online advertising that sort of set out some of our expectations in this space, and that you know that gives hopefully people kind of a, a, a clear view of actually just what will we be looking for, both from the the Google Privacy Sandbox, um, but also from other developments in this space. But for the Google Privacy Sandbox in particular, um, for those of you who want to get um, to say the latest gossip, uh, the latest news, I think is the uh, is the right phrase here. Um, please check the CMA website um, where the CMA is publishing um, regular updates um, on how that work is progressing. Great, thanks, thanks, Stephen. Um, so I think that that that's it for questions from from the audience. Um, I just had one 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 final question, which I'm I'm happy for anyone to to take before we go. Um, but when when will thoughts start to turn? to the 2023-24 work plan we've talked about how you know we want we want organizations to, to 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 feed in and tell us where they think we should be focusing but when 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 will, when will the work start in earnest to uh, to develop that work plan cat you go <laughs> you look like you were there first um most likely in the autumn, um, you know, as you can imagine, it takes a while to um, the sort of a, a process of bringing together. Um, it's a combination of things. One, what we're already doing this year and some things will continue into next year naturally because we see them as multi year programmes. Um, and then the other is a sort of bringing together of each organisation's own priorities and seeing where there's overlap. And there are some things where you naturally look at it and say, well, all four of us are really keen on this for the year ahead, you know, linking in with our own business planning cycles. And so that naturally goes onto the onto the agenda. And then a bit of a hard look of what's missing. Um, you know, are there all things that each one thinks the other one is doing? Um, uh, and therefore you sort of bring all of that together and then develop it into a set of ideas um, and then a set of proposals and a set of ambitions. Um, and then look at that against deliverability. I mean, you know, part that there is so much that we could be doing together. I think that was the challenge of this year's work plan. Um, and it's really focusing on in on those really high impact deliverables um, where there is real value in the four of us working together and which are going to deliver those benefits that Chia and Robin and others have talked about to consumers and to businesses. So things like enabling innovation. Um, so, yeah, it'll, it'll start in the autumn, um, but it, it's an ongoing process. And, you know, if, if something pops up throughout the year that isn't in the work plan, it doesn't mean it's off limits. Um, you know, we're, 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 there's there's a degree of flexibility in these things. So, as I said earlier, you know, we constantly welcome feedback. And if anyone spots areas and they think, well, you know, it'd be great if you looked at this, then, you know, please do come forward. Great. Thanks, Kat. Well, unfortunately, we're very nearly out of time, but thank you to all our panellists, particularly our, our external speakers, for, for lending us your time today um, and, and for a really interesting conversation. Um, for anyone that is interested in finding out more about the DRCF, we've already mentioned that you can find more details um, on, on the DRCF page on gov.uk. Not only will you find the work plan uh, for this year there, but you'll also see the latest annual report, which will give you a bit more detail about some of those achievements we've, we've talked through. Um, but thank you all for, for joining us. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference and um, please get in touch if you do have any, any suggestions for future areas of work of focus for the DRCF. Afternoon, everyone.